I, I do want to say that we are presenting a service of praise and thank you to our Lord. If you do not wish to be on video, please speak from your seat clearly so that your voice can be heard and videoed and it can be recorded and we can put it on our website if you are all comfortable with that. Are you comfortable with that? Yes. yes. When Bill puts this out on the website, there are people from all over that listen to this. Bill tells me they're from all over the world. And certainly there are people locally. And tonight, we want to give thanks to God for 2019 and some of the mo most incredible things that he's accomplished this year and how he'll bring us into 2020. And it's only by lifting our praise to the Lord can we encourage others that are in a walk or a struggle where they think, is God real? Does God really hear me? Is he paying any attention? <clears throat> So tonight, when we bring this message, I trust that people will have the answers to those questions tonight, and they will know that they know that they know. The title of the message tonight is Count Your Many Blessings. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you have blessed us through 2019. Thank you for your love, your mercy, Grace, thank you for forgiveness, provision, and protection. <clears throat> thank you, Lord, for leading us when sometimes we could not seem to find our way. Thank you for keeping us safe in times when we did not even know we were in harm's way. Our thanks and praise is what we want to raise tonight, giving you all the glory. Tonight, we raise a hallelujah as we close out 2019 and step into 2020, a year I believe you are going to bless us in ways we cannot imagine. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Amen. 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 Our God is an awesome God. God's love for us never ceases. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Psalm 9, 1. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. That means you will testify. Yes. Testify to the goodness of what God is doing. If you have your Bibles with you and want to open to Psalm 106, let's just go there. I looked at 136, but I'm going there too, so that's all right. Mm -hmm. It says, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy and loving kindness endures forever. Not for yesterday, and not for tomorrow, and not just for today. His loving kindness endures forever. That's a pretty powerful promise. When we look at the promises of God and we stand on those promises, we know that he never lets us down, that he always has a purpose and a plan to deliver exactly what he says. Sometimes we miss it because we're not listening or we're not paying attention to what it is he wants us to know. And other times we get so very excited because we're absolutely tuned in and focused on what God does and what he says, and then he shows it to us in black and white, in his, in his love book to us. 
I was at a restaurant, I was at Mother Webb's, as a matter of fact, when I went down to have my eye worked on, and Spencer said, don't read the distance to Mars. But while I was in there, I picked up a brochure. And the minute I read it, I said, that is going to be my ending message for 2019. It's amazing where God will meet you. Amen. And Mother Webb's <laughs> over a steak. That's a good place to meet. Amen. And the title of it says, Before You Say Another Word. I wanted to say, count your many blessings. So let's just listen to what this says. And it's there for everyone who sits in a seat at Mother Webb's. And I am sure there have been thousands of people who have read this. I thought it so important that I made copies of it tonight. And John will have them at the back when you leave tonight. There's one per family. I did 30 copies. I want you to have it. But it says, before you say another word, if you have food in your refrigerator, clothes on your back, a roof overhead, and a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of the world. If you have money in the bank, in your wallet, and some spare change in a dish someplace, you are among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. Think about this one. If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you are more blessed than a million who will not survive this week. Wow. If you never experience the danger of battle, the loneliness of imprisonment, the agony of torture, or the pains of, of starvation, you are ahead of 500 million people in the world. Wow. And if you attend a church meeting without fear of harassment, arrest, torture, or death, you are more blessed than three billion people in the world. Count your many blessings. If you have your Bibles, please go to Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Paul is probably writing this letter from prison, and uh, he's writing it as, as instructions to the church. Uh, so just listen to part of what he says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, take pleasure in him. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, mercy, tolerance, and patience be known to all people. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your special requests known to God. And the peace of God, the peace that reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. That's your peace. Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable, ad, admirable, and of good repute. If there is anything excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, think constantly on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. The things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these in daily life. And the God, who is the source of peace and well-being, will be with you. 
Paul was sending that message to them so that they would have an understanding of what it is to be content in all situations, knowing full well that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Count your many blessings. I'm going back to before you can say another word. If your parents are still alive and still married, you are very rare, even in North America. If you can hold your head up with a smile on your face and are truly thankful, you are blessed because the majority can, but many won't. Did you hear that? The majority can, but many won't. If you can hold someone's hand, hug them, or even touch them on the shoulder, you are blessed because you can offer a healing touch. If you can read this message, then you've just received a double blessing, that someone was thinking of you. And furthermore, you are more blessed than over two million people in the world that cannot read it all. Have a good day. Count your blessings. And pass this along, pass this along to remind everyone else how blessed you are. That's awesome. So as I said, those are copied and they're down back. And even those numbers, those statistics, are far less than they truly would be in 2019. Mm -hmm. We are truly blessed. There is no question that God blesses us. Now what is a blessing? It's God's favor and protection, one of the meanings of it. And you can look that up, and it will give you several meanings. I purposely took that, God's favor and protection. And blessings come in many ways from our Lord. And some blessings that you might receive would be things of this nature, for example. Wisdom, service, protection, rest, healing and health. Guidance, purpose, free will, abundance, eternity, love and sorrow, <coughs> patience and work. Are you grateful for your life? I just read to you 13 blessings that you may be overlooking. And there are thousands of blessings. I couldn't possibly name them all. I got those 13 from a website called youhaveacalling.com. And the Lord, I, so many of you know me, like I don't know how to get into these sites. The Lord just put that in front of me, literally. I was playing on my phone. I was trying, I was trying to bring up the Master's Hand website is what I was trying to do. Bill only has it on there three places for me to click into, and somehow I missed it, and I got into this little place called youhaveacalling.com. You can read each one of those, wisdom, service, protection, rest, all of them. There's a little something to read on them. Read them in totality. It takes you a little while. That's why I'm not giving it all to you tonight. I want you to do a little homework. I want to pique your interest. I want you to understand that even in the presence of your phone, you can still be in focus with the Lord because there's lots of good things under the Bible site or however I get into that. Some questions that you might ask yourself about blessings, and I've asked myself, am I a blessing to others? Sometimes I am. Sometimes I'm a pain in the neck to others, but that's okay. Once I'm a pain in the neck and we get that squared away, I promise I'll bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and what is a good blessing as opposed to a bad blessing? Is there such a thing as a bad blessing? No. No. And what does it mean to say, I am blessed? Because you've heard me say, I am blessed. I'm, I am so blessed I don't have time to be stressed. <laughs> to say that you are blessed, you are saying that you are thankful for several things. And some of them might be for your health, for love, for talent, for, for the riches that you share in the Lord. All of the things that you can think of. 
You're blessed if you have a strong voice, good eyesight. You have your, your ability to walk. You're blessed if you can just be with people. Now, some people might say, especially people with asthma or lung issues, they will say, I am blessed when I have a day where breathing comes easy. Think of that, where breathing comes easy. People who are hungry are blessed when someone provides food or a meal to them to fill their empty belly. And people who are lonely feel blessed when we take the time to look into their eyes and speak to their heart in our conversation. Do you know how many times people will talk to you and their eyes are here? They're talking to you. How are you today, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Are they waiting long enough to find out how you really are? No. No, no they're not. How are you today, Mike? Better than yesterday. Good. That's really I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> it's important to make eye contact. It truly is. I remember one time, years ago, I went to a doctor out in Westville. I had to go once a year for a medical. And this doctor would sit behind his desk. He never looked at you. He constantly looked down. And he started to tell me about my blood work. And it annoyed me. I was thinking, hello, yo, I'm here. <laughs> so as he was looking down, I did this. <laughs> he did that. He laughed. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to make eye contact because I'm wondering if it's my blood work you're reading or do you just have anybody's blood work in front of you there? Like, do you know who's here, who's sitting in front of you? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, I didn't know that because she wasn't looking at me. I'm a Kate Breitner. you got to look at me when you're talking to me. <laughs> and he said, okay. Your blood work is, and then he, but you know, there were several times I met him after that, and especially after I married Spencer, and he said, I will never, ever, ever forget the day when you looked down underneath to look, look me in the eye. It was a joke we had, but I think he learned a lesson that day, and I was blessing him. I truly was. I was teaching him how to have personal contact with people. He was a bit shy, and so we just needed to bring him out of his shyness. But we can be a blessing in so many ways. Let's bless the Lord now as we testify and give thanks to God as to how he's blessed us through this year. His favor and protection along with his provision and his miracles. Let us give thanks to him. We have this opportunity. And so I've asked people, and I mentioned it last week so it's not a surprise to you, that I wanted people to take a couple of minutes and come to the microphone and talk about how God blessed them. Now, I don't know how many of you will come, but I want you to come and I want you to simplify it and yet give glory to God because without Him, whatever you're going to share would not have happened. Mm -hmm. Amen. So now, who's first? <laughs> Chris. Chris just was voluntold that he's first. So we'll start with Chris, and that will get the ball rolling. That's why my feet were in the standing position. <laughs> <laughs> we all know the tortoise and the hare, right? Mm -hmm. Sloan City. Sloan City wins the race. Yeah, I'm sticking. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm pretty shy up here, but I'm also. Uh, Pull your mic up, please. I'm very shy up here. <laughs> um, I'm very thankful and very blessed by just having the people around me I have all the time. My family's always around me, no matter if they're next door, up the road, on the phone. I'm lucky enough to, as some of you are lucky enough to, to contact 
family from across the world, mm -hmm. right? I get to find out how my sister's day is, you know, from 3,000 miles away, yes. and tell her that I love her, so that she knows it, and she says it back to me as well. My brother is a different story, he comes out, <laughs> so I'll just tell him I love him. I'm thankful for my church family, all of you, mm -hmm. all of the people that have impacted my life. Mm -hmm. They've impacted my life in the best way, best way I could think of. And my uh, my circumstances have changed so much that I, it took it took a week to to figure out and to get clear headed and to just realize what was happening. What was actually happening? That God, that God already touched me, and that things have already gone through. You, right over there, I know you. You, you told me that God has this done. It is done. Amy, sorry, I don't don't mean to point fingers. But a lot of you have said the same thing. That God is already on this. He's got this. Don't worry. Don't let it bring you down. I let it bring me down quite a few times. We've all we've all had that fall, but we've always been raised back up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't Christmas time that raised that raised me back up. It was just that one phone call mm -hmm. to vindicate me and to, to tell me personally, yes. you were right. Okay, there is something. We were wrong. They didn't say sorry, but it's okay. I'm sure somebody's butt burning on the other end. <laughs> I'll pray for them too. <laughs> but I'm thankful for all of you, and I'm thankful for my family, my mom and dad especially. And you guys always took care of me as a kid. You're still our kid. You're st yeah, I still didn't annoy them enough to, for them to kick me out. So. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, God, for everything you've done. Now, who's next? Come on now, don't be shy. All right, here comes Rose. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'd just like to first thank God for my church family, mm -hmm. and I'm thankful for all the prayers that I've received over this past year. God has been so good to me. He has blessed me in so many ways, and he gave me a real wonderful blessing this past week. Um, I was feeling down because I didn't think I was going to get to spend Christmas time with both my boys, and God worked it all out, yes, thank you. and my younger son got to come home from, from Cape Breton, and we had a lovely meal Christmas Eve day, and then Christmas Day I got to spend with my older boy and had another lovely meal. So I was just blessed, and I also thank God for touching my body this year, and yes. just the way he has been working in my life. I just love him, and thank you guys for all your support. Okay, who's next? This is Arden. Who? Uh, I am very thankful to God for everything that he has done in my life. This year was a tumultuous year. As you all know, I was diagnosed with cancer. And um, it was all taken care of. And uh, it was a scary time to go through. But I thank my husband and my son. And his son and my daughter and my oldest son as well as my church family, especially you, Caroline, Tim, and Spencer. You've been there as my stalwart friends to build me up. And God, he has given me the peace to go through all that. 
And as of December, I, the end of November, in fact, it's been one year I've been cancer free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Um, I'm so thankful. So thankful for that. And I had an injury this year. And uh, I've been on an ease back to work. And it was to do with the, uh, the, the cancer. So I was on ease back to work. Then all of a sudden I hurt my back. It was, didn't happen to work, but it happened at our cottage. And I couldn't work. I ended up landing in the ER a few times, and finally I just couldn't tolerate working. And so from the middle of October, mm -hmm. right into now, um, I can't sit for any great length of time because it's sciatica and it's the lower back. I have a moderate spinal stenosis as well as some impingement on the SI joints. And um, so anyway, I haven't had any pay come in, so up until, was it last week? <laughs> the 20th. Um, I had gotten a call from my manual life, her, her workplace insurance, who said, we will cover you for that time. And she said, I'm just getting you prepared now. You should have a deposit in your account for December. And then they also back paid me from yeah. in the middle of October to the no all of November. And it was such a blessing because we were financial stress, you know what that can do to you. And I'm so thankful that the Lord had touched people to actually work on that and get it through as quickly as possible to relieve some of that stress. Yeah. And he is so good. Yes. And I'm thankful that I have my mom still with us. Yes. And my sisters. Mm -hmm. God love them all. Yes. <laughs> and I'm so thankful my doctor, my doctor, my daughter had come to the Lord this year. Yes. Yeah. She was baptized at her cottage lot yeah. yes. by my husband and myself. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like there's been multitudes of blessings upon blessings. And we are so thankful. And we thank, are very thankful for our church, our church family. Because without the prayers, the prayers really mean a lot because you can feel them. You actually feel the presence of something good and you know that something's going to change. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And God bless you all. Thank you. Okay, somebody's next. Oh, good stuff. Here's Anne. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'd just like to thank God for everything he's done for me. Um, all of you who know me have seen a difference in me, mm -hmm. seen a change in me. I'm healthier. Mm -hmm. I, yes. I have so much peace and joy in my life. I have a little, uh, little skip in my step. A little <laughs> bit. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of skip along when nobody's looking. And, um, but this year, um, yes. God asked me to, um, to be um, the leader of a prayer group. You know, I, I wasn't too sure about being the leader. Join the prayer group, fine, but the leader, I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. But I was, God gave me people in my life, like my prayer partners and Caroline. Um, they, they encouraged me, they told me that the Lord would give me everything I needed to do this. Yes. And they never gave up on me, and they never let me give up on myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just so happy that I can, I can just dip into God's plentiful source of strength and that I can get strength anytime I need it yes. and I, I just want to thank everybody here in the Father's house that that's prayed for me mm -hmm. and thank God for putting me into the middle of such a beautiful family mm -hmm. um, I can't wait to see what he's going to do for all of us in 2020 because yes. I know there's good things coming there can always only be good things when it's when it's our father yes. and we should always love him praise him mm -hmm. Adore him, you know. What, what a mighty God we serve! I would sing it, but that wouldn't be a blessing for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just thank the Lord, and if anybody wants to sing it, that's it. That's up to them. Thank you. Yes, Jack. Millie and Conrad Barry, you were going to come. Oh. Yes. I thought you were saying Beth. My hair is. Oh yeah, I, don't know. I said Jack, but you didn't hear that. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
back. Well, I can't help but give God thanks because yes. this time next next year, sure. Last year I was a very empty, sad man <laughs> after having lost my wife and and mm -hmm. being by myself. But you know, I took it all to God. Yes. And uh, I told God exactly the kind of a woman I wanted. <laughs> I, I pretty near got the one I prayed for. No. Just a couple of days before my wife went home to glory, mm. she said to me, I'm not afraid to die, mm. yeah. but what's going to happen to you? Mm. And I remember that day I was standing in front of her, and I said, Jean, don't worry about me. Mm. God will take care of me, yes. mm -hmm. and I'm a big boy. Mm. Yeah. And I began to pray and ask God to give me a wife. Yes. And uh, he did that. He gave me Millie. Yes. And I love her with all my heart. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And she's just been such a blessing in my life and brought me out of that place of despair that I was in mm. and put a smile on my face again. Yes. And another thing that I had been praying about after having been in the ministry for a number of years, I just felt so worthless and so empty, and not, it just seemed like no doors were opening, and, and I began to pray and to talk to God. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to the Lord, Lord, I'll go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And little did I think it was going to be to Africa at nearly 74 years of age. Thank you, Lord. But you know, sometimes we ask God for things and we almost tell Him how to do it. Mm -hmm. But it's when we get out of the way and just say, God, I'm at the bottom of it. I, I just don't know what to do. And this thing of, of going to Africa, it just happened, so I can't believe it even yet that I'm going to Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, they sent me the itinerary for a while I'll be there, and I'm not going to have much time to go on safaris or anything. <laughs> but my prayer is, is that as we go, yes. that God will bless us. Yes. That God will anoint us. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want to go for just a trip. No. I don't want to go just to be heard. But I want to go and lift up the name of Jesus. So I just feel tonight that I have so much to thank God for. Yes. And thank God for little Caroline here, the pastors away at us. And, and for all of you people, you're so loving and so kind. Most of all, I want to say to my Heavenly Father tonight, mm. thank you for Jesus. Amen. 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 Bless you, bless you. All right, someone else? Come on now. Camilla? Um, first of all, I'd like to thank God for my salvation. Yes. For taking a sinner like me, welcoming me into his family. I can't say anything uh, about the church family here, anything more than what I'm saying now. I love them. I miss when I'm not here. I've had two good blessings this year. I've had a new great-grandson. No, I've had three, sorry. Uh, two, a new great-grandson, another great-grandchild on the way, and I got a call from my nephew. Now, I haven't seen him since he was five years old. And he teaches in Ontario and he touched base with me and it's just like the tears just flew yeah. mm -hmm. and he said I've got something to say he said I don't know how to say it I said well just spit it out you know mm -hmm. he said I've been following you on the computer and he said 
uh, without you knowing it, and he said, my wife and I went to church the other day, and he said, I turned myself over to God. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He is 45, 45 years old, and I haven't seen him since he was five, and he's coming home this spring. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Awesome. beautiful. And God has put everything in place. Yes, thank you. Like he place. knows from the time we wake up in the morning, Till the time we go to bed at night, everything we're going to say, yes. everything we're going to do. Yes. And I said to the kids this Christmas, I said, I don't want anything for Christmas. And they said, why? I said, you go, you buy somebody a cup of coffee, you buy them a meal, do a good deed. Yes. Because you never know, you could be doing it for God. Yes, and, exactly. And there's just so much I've got to thank you for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Carol. And I made the one resolution. I'm going to end 2019 the same way as I'm going to start 2020, and that's reading my Bible. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Dorothy. Thank you, Father. Oh, our God is an awesome God. Amen. He is. He is. He sure is. He sure is. Dorothy. He sure is. <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to give thanks for God's protection all my life. Yes. Um, I know he's always there for us. My mum died when I was two. Oh. I went into care at five and a half. Um, I was well fed, I was well clothed. Um, I've been in all kinds of situations, a lot of them not good, but I've been protected and I'll stand on that that all my life I have been protected. Um, I didn't see too much of my real father, my biological one. I saw him a couple of times before I came to Canada. I went back after two years, as Frank had said, when you've been here two years, you can go back for a visit. Uh, my biological father was very ill. I heard that at Christmas, um, 19, well, it to be 1978, the Christmas. And I messaged the home he was in and said, I'm coming back in June, and I hope to see you then. I got back to England, and I called the home that he was in, and said, I'm asking how Mr. Thompson is. I'm his daughter from Canada. And she said, well, I hope you're coming to see him because I think he's waiting for you. I saw him twice and he died um, a Thursday evening after I'd been to see him. Mm. By the time I got home, I got the call uh, that he passed away. Mm. It gave me, I, I can't say satisfaction, but I knew that my dad loved me. Yes. Mm. Like my heavenly father loves me. Not in the same way, but you always wonder when you're in care, mm -hmm. because you're so small, you don't know reasons. Mm -hmm. But the comfort he gave me, yes. knowing <clears throat> that he had waited to see me again. Um, we've had a lot of things since we came to Canada. Uh, another big thing, of course, being ad adopted, I didn't know mum's side of the family. We can knock Facebook, but God worked through that at times too. Mm. I was on a site for the village, the small place where I was born and lived till I was five. <laughs> and someone had put on, were the two stores, two shops on William Street? And I put on 
I know there was one because I used to live almost opposite it. I lived at number 36 um, until I went away at five. The following day, there was a message, Dorothy, were your cousins. Wow. Oh, wow. I was the two-year-old little girl that they lost contact with. Wow. Thank you. I got a message um, from, it was my cousin's daughter. She says, Dorothy, my dad cried when they called and said they found you because his mum, all her life, after we went into care, had wondered what had happened to us. God is so good. Yes. This year, I went over to England and met them. Wow. And they lost contact. Well, when I got the first message, it was 70 years that they'd wondered where I'd been because I'm the youngest, no one was born after me, but I'm the youngest of them all. Wow. And as God says, we all need roots. Yes. yes. And I found I've got some. Yeah. And as I say, I know that it was God's doing. Yes. And I just know that I'm protected and I know I have challenges mm -hmm. next year, but I know I'll get through it. You will. Yeah. You will. I know yeah. I'll get through it because we have his protection. Yes. It may not be how we want it, <laughs> but yes. we'll get through it. Amen. 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 So Amen. all I can say is thank you. Thank you, God. Yes. And I know that you're there for us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dorothy. I know there are others. Don't be shy, please. This is the night to let God know that you appreciate exactly what he's doing. While you're thinking about whether or not you're coming, I want to mention that <clears throat> I know of a lady who had a health issue. She was very, very sick. And God brought her through. We prayed every morning for her asking God to touch her and to give doctors and nurses a supernatural wisdom in her care. To find out what it was that was troubling her and bring her back to being herself because she's a lovely lady. That lady's here tonight and I did ask her if I could tell this story and she said yes. And then I said, can I say your name? So I'm gonna ask you to stand, Christine. And we wanna just clap and thank God. Thank you, Christine. Christine works with, with Mike and with Roxanne, and they've been missing you. Mm -hmm. And I just truly believe that God has got a, just a supernatural year ahead for you. That's the answer to prayer. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just, I thank you for letting me share that tonight and, uh, and knowing that God has his hand on your life and there's a purpose. So you get ready to do some work, my girl, because yeah. he, he's not keeping you here for nothing. All right, you got that? <laughs> All right. It's Mike, good. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Lord. Ah, uh, thank you, Lord. Well, a year ago, <clears throat> we heard words we, no family should have to hear. Mm. That you have cancer. Uh, everything went white. Yeah. I didn't see that one coming. And we did, we had a little bit of a time. And then Artie got a call to go have her surgery, which was good because everything fell into place. Yes. We could, at the time, we couldn't believe how fast mm. things fell into place. Thank you, Lord. But at the same time, we were not surprised because we knew God's hand was on all of it. The time she went for mammogram to the little dot that they found, to the callback, to the da 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 da. Then came the day of the surgery. Mm -hmm. 
That was tough, yet it was good. Because I knew she made the right decision. The, night she, the day she had the surgery, that night, in the 43 years we've been married, was uh, the longest one I ever spent. That bed felt like I was sleeping on the front lawn. I just, I couldn't. You know, I, I looked over, she's not there. Mm. And I thought, this is what the rest of my life is gonna be, you know. And, uh, thank you. Faith in God or not, a human being, you're gonna get scared. You're gonna get scared. And it wasn't Satan taking over, it was just human. We're not God. We're not impervious to the fear. You're gonna have it. 43 years flashed right like it was that. And then she came home the next day and then I watched what she had to go through. And I couldn't help her because there were footsteps that she had to take by herself. And I couldn't. And for a few months, that fear was in the background. And it manifested into a physical pain. I got so weak, I couldn't do anything. I could hardly walk. I couldn't think yet, I had to do music. I had to write a message every week. I had to go and fulfill my commitments to my employer. Right? I had to put on, I put on, you had to put on this face. Our home is equal responsibility, Artith and I. I'm not ahead of her and she's not ahead of me. But at the end of the day, it is the husband that is the responsibility for that household to protect the home from the rest of the world. Yeah. But I had nothing left. I just, I didn't. I just, I, I didn't know what the heck to do. Then, she was trying to do the ease back, and the amount of hours that she had to lose put such a financial burden and hit on her home. That, that worry came in. Now that was Satan, okay? But again, had nothing to do with my faith in God. The reality is a banker doesn't care whether you go to church or not. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, things just started to turn around. God. We had a financial blessing that came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. We didn't ask for it. We didn't cry boo-hoo. We never cried boo-hoo to anybody here. We never said anything. Mm -hmm. But we did. God knew because we spoke to him. And we didn't go whining to him, God, you got to do this, you got to, no, 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 that's not the way it works. He's not a Sam's Pizza, you just can't phone up on the phone and get things like that. But then as the summer went on, our daughter came home. We got to baptize her. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. She was becoming healed. Mm -hmm. I felt a little better about my job, I didn't hate it anymore. It's not that I hated the job, I just hated going because I had to leave her. And then we got to baptize Shauna in Eden Lake. Yes. And then we got to walk her down the aisle. Mm. Where she got married in a church mm -hmm. that her husband's parents got married in 40 years ago. Thank you, Lord. And it started to pour on us. We put a little addition onto the lake. We got through Christmas. We're not broke. Mm -hmm. Thank you, we got a little bit of money in the bank. Mm -hmm. Our truck is paid off. The house is warm. We got a healing coming on Chris, yes. right? We're looking forward to 2020 and look at what we, we are so rich. Mm -hmm. Artith and I are millionaires because we have you people in our lives. Mm -hmm. When we got a cut, you people bled for us. When she wasn't here mm -hmm. on the platform singing, you had no idea what she was going through. And the hardest thing I ever had to say in 10 years to you folks is, Art of that cancer. Mm. But if you don't share that with your brothers and sisters, 
then you kind of pull all of that crap and you keep it inside and you don't draw any strength from it. Yeah. We finish the, we're finishing the year on a high note. Thank right? you, Jesus. Right? Thank you know, you. Even this congregation, mm -hmm. we had to say goodbye to one person this year. Mm -hmm. The demographics here is older people. I mean, that's no mistake and I'm not making a joke. But Fred all Fred all went home. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Think of that, the small group this size, where God had one room ready. Yeah. None of your rooms are ready. Mm -hmm. Pastor Caroline says, tie a knot and hang on because 2020 is coming. Mm -hmm. And I want to give thanks to God. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. For overcoming my fear in human. Right? And allow me to get a little bit of enthusiasm and, and strength. Keeps my fingers working so I don't trip over myself when I'm playing to Him. Thank you. Right? And a great piano player to play with. I'll tell you, genius. Just to, I almost know what she's going to do. I've played with a lot of people over the years, and I, and I do. I do have to give you props, Jeannie. When we stand up here, when we're up here before service, and she just starts to play, and I can follow what she's doing. And I'm looking out, and I see people entering in and doing this and praying. I said, you know what? God put the right people together. Amen. This guy's been in the business a while. I think he knows what he's doing. Amen. 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 That's my testimony, folks. God is good. Amen. I watched Mike and Artie and Chris over this last year in the battle that they had to fight. And they fought it with their gloves on. And do you know what it's do you know what the front of their gloves said? Fast faith. Fast faith. They didn't give up. You didn't give up, you didn't give in. You tied a knot and you hung on. Just rewarding that. Yeah. God wants us to, to know that we know that we know. But his love and his protection is there. Is there anybody else? Okay? Yes? Bless you, my dear. Yeah. Um, a year ago on Christmas, I spent the day alone. I spent Boxing Day alone and New Year's Day alone. And because of it, I went into a bad depression. And I couldn't take any more pills because I'm taking the maximum now. <laughs> And then, in, then I uh, gave my heart to the Lord, and He made a change in me. Yes, thank you, Lord. And um, you see me in pants tonight, first time. <laughs> <laughs> I never wore pants to church. <laughs> but they were given to me as a gift. And Charlie said, I bought them for you, the dress pants, to wear to church. And I thought, uh, uh. <laughs> But I feel okay with it. Yes, amen. You know, I really feel okay with it. Because God doesn't look at what I'm wearing. No. No. He looks at my heart. That's, yes. that's right. And uh, this year, I had the best Christmas that I've had in many years. Thank you, Lord. I called my daughter up. Rebecca and asked her when she was having her Christmas meal. She said, I don't know, Mom. Um, Savannah's with her father for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and she said, I don't know what I'm having it. Okay, I never told her why I called. I hung up the phone within 15 minutes, the phone rang. Mom, what are you doing for Christmas? Have you got any plans? No. Well, you and Charlie are invited out to our place for supper on Christmas Day. Oh, thank you. Awesome. And it was Wendy who called me. And um, we got lots of place going out there. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we left the house at 5 and we were supposed to be there at 5.30. We got there at quarter to 6. <laughs> but um, we got there, that was the main thing. Oh, that's yes. And you know, Charlie is the type of person that, he's very cool. I haven't seen him, you know, 
worked up for it. Yeah, um, so he is a, a good guy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thank the Lord for everything he has done for me since I gave my heart to him. Amen. And I also thank him for Charlie. Yes, yes. Because without Charlie, mm. I wouldn't be going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but he put him in my life. Oh, my and uh, I just want to praise the Lord for everything he's done for me. Brenda. Okay, anyone else? Lois. <coughs> thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, Father. Hi. Um, I've had so many blessings of the last year. Um, started with the birth mm -hmm. of a grandson and healthy, happy family. Yes. Then my other daughter came home from out west with her family mm -hmm. and um, they've had some road bumps along the way but uh, I've just been so blessed having them close yes. and, um, and this past spring had a lot of people praying for me. Mm -hmm. um, as a lot of you know, we had, or I had a, a property that was for sale for quite a few years, mm -hmm. on and off. But I prayed this time before we put it back on the market. And a lot of other people prayed too. And even when I was ready to give up, my prayer people didn't. And when we put that house up for sale this last time, I knew something was different. And the Lord knew that I put everything in his hands yes. because I had nothing left financially. I was struggling, mm -hmm. trying to pay for an apartment, property taxes on the other place. And <laughs> it's nothing but a miracle because the day that the house went up for sale, there just happened <laughs> to be a couple in town from BC. That doesn't just happen. God had a plan. Amen. And everything was brought together. And everything happened so fast. Within a week, that house was sold. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. People came and looked at it. They put in an offer. And I, I had said, told the Lord a long time ago, I don't care how much money I get for the place, but I want to pay my debt. Mm -hmm. And you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it was enough to pay off my debt. Thank you. And I just thank the Lord for that. And I just want to draw strength from this mm. so that if you're in financial hardship mm -hmm. pray to the Lord mm -hmm. and be faithful to him yes. and don't give up yes. he's got a plan yes. and if you let him if you let him 
put everything in place. Yes. yes. He will make it work. Yes. Amen. Step back and let him do his work. Amen. So thank you, Lord. Mm. Lean in on him and know full well that he is a faithful God. He is faithful. Anyone else? Praise God. Praise God. There may be others who would stand and testify to the goodness of the Lord. Let your voice be heard and let your praise be an encouragement to someone who's waiting for an answer to prayer. For someone who is holding on by threat. Don't let go. Let God take you through. He will. Tonight, I thank you, Lord, for your many blessings on me. We sang that song earlier. Sometimes in our brokenness, our blessings come to remind us that God came to make us whole. Yes. And sometimes in our loneliness, you come, Father God, to remind us that we are never alone. Mm -hmm. And in our tears, your blessing comes to remind us that tears wash our soul. And the tears are the language of love. Your blessings, Father God, are a gift to us, sent to us through your word. The Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. I just want to thank you, Lord. Yes. I want to thank you, Father. I want to thank you with a grateful heart. And I want to thank you with a song of praise. And I want to thank you with an outstretched arm. Thank you, Lord. And I want to thank you through testifying. Thank you, I just want to bless your name. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Our God is an awesome God. I'm going to try and sing this song. And then we're going to end in prayer. I know I've kept you long. But this has to be a night to remember. Spencer has something to think about after we have this. Am I ever glad my other brother reminded me of that? I'm fessing up. When life's when upon life's pillows you are tempted, tossed. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Sing, count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Are you ever burdened with the load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the, what the Lord has done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy, your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count 
Won't your blessing see what God has done? Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and give you comfort to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Spencer, count your blessings. Count your many blessings. He is my blessing.